Welcome to New Possibilities, I Speak Truth to Power Without Fear. In this video, I'm going to explain why I support Bernie Sanders over Hillary Clinton. Often, Hillary Clinton wants to claim responsibility for the successes of the Clinton administration. So if she can claim responsibilities for the successes of that administration, then she needs to claim responsibility for the failures of that administration as well. And there's no bigger failing than the problem of mass incarceration in the black community. A problem caused in major part by the Clinton administration. As pointed out in Michelle Alexander's masterpiece entitled The New Jim Crow, she writes this. As the Justice Policy Institute has observed, the Clinton administration's tough on crime policies resulted in the largest increase in federal and state prison inmates of any president in American history of any president. And we know that a disproportionate percentage of the inmates who are locked up are black. We know that the war on drugs turned out to be nothing but a war on black people. A war that was escalated to a terrible degree under the Clinton administration. For that Hillary Clinton is responsible in part because she went around advocating this crime bill. She went around referring to black people as super predators, perpetuating negative ideas about black people and perpetuating a policy that has destroyed our community. We have thousands upon thousands of black people incarcerated. And that problem of mass incarceration only fuels the crime that exists in our communities. You have fathers who are locked away. They can't be there for their children. So their children are without any kind of guidance or direction. You have men locked away that can't be fathers can't be husbands, can't be providers. They are stripped from their community and that destroys the community. And the same is true for women. Women stripped away from the community that can't watch over their children because they're locked away. Locked away. And even when they leave prison, they leave a physical prison and enter a virtual prison where they are denied their basic civil rights by law. In many states, they can be deprived of their right to vote. They are deprived of educational opportunities. They're deprived of the right to receive financial aid to go to college. They're deprived of job opportunities because of their criminal record. They are deprived of housing and federal assistance uh, through food stamps and such because of welfare reform under the Clinton administration. Another reason why I don't support Hillary Clinton. They put limits on welfare assistance, a five-year limit, and they restrict it access to various welfare programs and food stamps for people who had criminal records. And such restrictions only fuel crime. Because when someone is denied a way to provide for themselves, then they often engage in criminal activity in order to survive. So you have a cycle that repeats itself a cycle of crime, a cycle of imprisonment, a cycle of oppression. 
And as was pointed out in George Stephanopoulos' book entitled All Too Human, he talks about how the Clinton administration had a strategy called triangulation, where they adapted popular ideas among the Republicans as their own. They used that tactic to win approval, crossover approval, mainstream approval, in order to further their agenda, in order to get elected and reelected. And it worked, so they adopted tough on crime policies, similar to Republican ideas. They adopted so-called welfare reform to end welfare as people knew it, and programs that were lifesavers for people who were in desperate situations. So for those two reasons, I can't support Hillary Clinton. And I know that some people will say, well, Bernie Sanders voted for the crime bill as well. And I just have a couple of responses to that assertion. First of all, you know, I don't obviously don't support anyone voting in favor of that crime bill. But there's a difference between casting a vote and actually presenting an idea, coming up with this crime bill, lobbying for it, lobbying members of Congress to support it. There's a difference between that and casting a vote. Also, when Bernie Sanders spoke about this bill, he talked about how oppression, childhood poverty, poor education, and all of those other factors help lead to the crime problem in the community. He raised those issues, whereas Hillary Clinton referred to our people as being super predators. So there's a difference. The third reason why I can't support Hillary Clinton is because of the Clinton's policy that led to the deregulation of Wall Street, the end of Glass-Steagall. This unleashed Wall Street on the American people. It led to the collapse of the American economy, the recession. It led to the housing foreclosure crisis, a crisis that disproportionately impacted black people, a problem that led to 53% of black wealth being completely wiped out. Hillary Clinton actually expects us to believe that somehow she can reign in Wall Street. She wants us to believe that. Despite the fact that Wall Street paid her over $600,000 a speech. $600,000 to give a speech, to give various speeches. So for each speech, she would earn that kind of money. Also, she has raised money from Wall Street through super PACs. How can we expect somebody who has raised all this money from Wall Street not to be influenced by Wall Street? She actually expects us to believe that Wall Street has no influence over her. She expects us to believe that. When asked if she would be willing to release transcripts of her speeches to Wall Street, she tried every kind of way to duck and dodge that question by essentially saying, well, if everyone else releases, releases their speeches, their transcripts, then I will do so as well. What does she have to hide? What does she promise Wall Street? 
in exchange for their financial support to her. You can't tell me that Wall Street would give this woman hundreds of thousands of dollars and not expect anything in return. That's just ridiculous on his face. She is a creature of Wall Street. And unlike her, Bernie Sanders has spoken out boldly against Wall Street. He's spoken out about income and wealth inequality in this country, about how the top tenth of 1% owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90% of the population. He's the one speaking out about how 58% of all new income has gone to Wall Street to the top 1%. He's talked about all these disparities. He's talked about various plans to address the problem of Wall Street. The fourth reason why I don't support Hillary Clinton is because she supports trade agreements. She has supported trade agreements that have had devastating impact on American people and the American economy. Trade agreements that send jobs overseas and leave Americans without jobs. There was a time when young people could graduate from high school and get good paying jobs working in factories. In places like Detroit, they would be able to buy a home, provide for their wife and their children with just a high school education. Nowadays, that's gone. Nowadays, people don't have the same opportunities. Many of these manufacturing jobs have gone overseas to third world countries where the wages are very low. Thereby stripping communities like Detroit and other urban areas of jobs, of opportunity. And that's a problem that has to be addressed. Again, Hillary Clinton supported NAFTA and all these other trade agreements that allowed those things to happen. Whereas Bernie Sanders wants to reverse those trade policies. He wants to hold those companies accountable by making it so that they can't hide their revenues overseas so that they will be taxed fairly like all other entities are in this country. So for that reason, I support him over Hillary Clinton. Before I did this video, I looked over the policy positions of both candidates of Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. On paper, Hillary Clinton has a great racial justice agenda. She says all the right things. But again, when you take into account the devastating impact of the policies of the Clinton administration. All that re rhetoric on paper means nothing. All these black people locked up because of the Clinton administration's policies. Policies that Bill Clinton acknowledges were wrong. Policies that he acknowledges had a devastating impact on our community. When you take that into account, all the rhetoric on her website is virtually meaningless. When you take into account the race baiting that she has used, it's particularly in her um, campaign in 2008. When you take that into account, all the racial justice policies on paper mean nothing. It mean, they mean nothing. The same people who are supporting Hillary Clinton today, many of those people were calling her out 
for race baiting back when she ran for president and she was um, competing against then-Senator Barack Obama. At a time when people feared the very real possibility of a black man being assassinated while trying to run for president, this woman talked about why she remained in the race. And she talked about the assassination of Bobby Kennedy and essentially drew parallels to the possible assassination of Barack Obama. Then you have Bill Clinton, who was very dismissive of Obama's victory in South Carolina. He compared Obama's victory in South Carolina to Jesse Jackson's victory in South Carolina in 1984 and 1988. And he's basically saying, well, Jesse Jackson was victorious back then. And the fact that Obama was victorious in South Carolina means nothing because Jesse was victorious as well. And he ended up losing. Also, you have the example of Hillary Clinton talking about hardworking Americans. And then she goes on to say hardworking white Americans aren't supporting Obama. And they're supporting her. She used that as a pitching point or a selling point to potential voters and funders. Also, Bill Clinton, when he was speaking in West Virginia, he talked about how people like you can make a difference. And the people like you that he was referring to were white people, white working class people. Again, appealing to race. Again, another example of race baiting. And then we look at the famous example of him throwing sister soldier and Jesse Jackson under the bus in order to win more white approval and support. In fact, they have used that example to coin the phrase sister soldier moment. That's when a candidate disrespects his base or element of his base in order to win wider support. So here you have black people, most loyal supporters of Bill Clinton. And he just throws them under the bus in order to score points with white voters. That whole pattern of race baiting and disregarding black people, that speaks much louder than anything that's typed out on somebody's website. And when you look at Bernie Sanders' racial justice agenda, you see that it's very similar. So I'm going to have to go with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has a long track record of fighting for social justice in this country. Not only did he march with Dr. King and participate in nonviolent acts for civil rights, Bernie Sanders has been fighting for working people in Congress for years. So for that reason, I support him. Also, I support him because he has vision. He goes, he goes beyond the pragmatic. He goes beyond just talking about what will be passed <clears throat> based on the composition of Congress. He has bold ideas. Bold ideas like single payer, universal health care for all. Ideas like free college education for students. Ideas like raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour 
which is higher than what Hillary Clinton proposed. Um, she proposed like $12 an hour. And other initiatives. One of his plans is to invest $55 billion in youth employment. Those are bold ideas. And many people have said, well, those ideas are unlikely to be passed by Congress. And they also say, well, Bernie Sanders is not as electable as Hillary Clinton. So for that reason, you should support Hillary Clinton. If electability is her primary selling point, then she's not worthy of our vote. We need candidates that have courage to present an idea, to try to persuade Congress to move in a different direction. And frankly, I would rather have the right candidate run and lose then select the wrong candidate and that candidate win. So I support Bernie Sanders because of his boldness, his, the boldness of his ideas. You know, he's not a perfect candidate and I've expressed some of my concerns in another video addressing the question of reparations. And I do think that we should demand that Bernie Sanders support H.R. 40, which is a study of the question of reparations. All those um, black activists who are supporting him, they should press him on that issue of reparations. They shouldn't just be surrogates and puppets for any candidate. Instead, they should use their power to influence him to move in, even, in an even more progressive fashion. Also, I want to conclude by bringing this point up, and that's the issue of war, the issue of the Iraq war. Hillary Clinton voted in support of that war. A war that was based on a lie, based on a lie that Iraq possessed weapons of mass destruction. It turns out that Iraq did not have weapons of destruction. It turns out that Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. And so based on a lie, thousands of people died in Iraq. Many American soldiers died in Iraq. Because of that war, the region was destabilized and there was a power vacuum created. And that vacuum led to the creation of the group that people call ISIS. <clears throat> a group that is barbaric, a group that is a terrorist group, a group that not only poses a threat to the people in the region, but a group that actually poses a threat to the United States. A group that beheads people, a group that commits all kinds of human violations, human rights violations, a group that enslaves women, a group that actually crucifies people, a barbaric, medieval, twisted organization. That organization would not be in existence if it wasn't for that Iraq war that Hillary Clinton voted for. Bernie Sanders voted against that war. So I trust his judgment more than I trust hers. Because she had an opportunity to make the right decision and she made the wrong one. That war cost this nation a great deal. And there has to be some accountability. We can't reward people like Hillary Clinton with a higher office after making such a bad decision. This woman 
is very hawkish in her policies, her foreign policies. We need someone that's more inclined towards peace than war in the White House. And I think that Bernie Sanders is more inclined towards peace than Hillary Clinton is. So for that reason as well, I support Bernie Sanders over Hillary Clinton. So those are my thoughts about this issue. Tell me what you think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.